All right, so it's uh, Tuesday, November 5th. I'm here in Las Vegas, Nevada for SEMA. And uh, tomorrow morning, I've got a meeting at 10 o'clock regarding AB 210. I'll be meeting with the uh, SEMA SAN people, uh, along with uh, Bill Adams from uh, the California Association of Car Clubs. Uh, and we're gonna see what we can get done about AB 210. But for now, I'm gonna spend the entire day here at SEMA videoing uh, things that I think are cool and hopefully you think are cool too. So let's go. So just walking in, I spotted this uh, 66 uh, Pontiac Le Mans. Uh, my first car was actually a 68, so, um, although it didn't look like this. This is the Le Monster. It's got a uh, late 70s Trans Am hood scoop. It's like it's functional too, they cut the back end out of it. Uh, it's got the uh, custom door handles and check out the uh, full custom interior with the beehive uh, pattern everywhere, with the hexagon. It's like, Amazing paint and a, a custom spoiler. Can't be SEMA without a marching band playing Neil Diamond. something you don't see stateside this is a, a 1972 Australian Valiant Charger uh, if you check it out here it's got a right hand drive full custom interior uh, something you definitely don't see every day I don't even know what to say about this thing it's like the back half of a 1960 Cadillac and then uh, when you come up to the front, even the dashboard is out of like a uh, late 40s, early 50s uh, Chevy pickup truck. That fully customized. Very interesting. Okay, so this one's actually got a huge crowd around. This is a uh, 47 Willys Jeep, uh, obviously full custom. So it's got the uh, four-cylinder Cummins diesel in it uh, with a uh, turbo on it. It's gonna be hard to get around people even to shoot this whole thing because everyone's like crowded around this guy. Um, it's got it set up looking like a whiskey still. The interior with the uh, very uncomfortable tractor seats. And it's got the old uh, Johnny Popper agriculture motor on the back. Gas pump shift knob. All right, continuing with the rest of it, it looks like he's got, uh, he's got pipes and wrenches for his license plate hole down. I can honestly say this is like the coolest uh, Chevy Vega I've ever seen. It's like uh, full road race style. Awesome body kit. Right, this has really caught my eye. This is a full custom uh, 68 Toyota Land Cruiser. Dropped. This thing ain't going off roading anytime soon. They did a really amazing job on this. Really something different to see. I just love patina cars, and uh, this one's a uh, Nash Metropolitan with a uh, big old American V8 in it. Very cool build. The nice thing about these is uh, you can actually pick these up. You know, Project Nash Metropolitans aren't really that expensive uh, for the hardtop, so, I mean, you don't see the people doing builds like this. Here's a full custom Opal. This thing's got a LS swap in it. Uh, wheel flares, uh, ready for, for road racing. It's pretty cool because I used to have a uh, late 60s Opal Cadet that someone had put a uh, 327 Corvette motor in it back in the late 60s. Um, I wish I still had it, but I had to get rid of it, unfortunately, because I didn't have anywhere to store it. 
But uh, very cool to see a nice patinaed opal uh, built into something that's totally awesome. Here's something that's very different. This is a Renault Dauphine uh, mid-engine. Check this out in the back seat. There you go. Um, Right-hand drive. So kind of cool to see a uh, sort of obscure French car, at least obscure in the United States, uh, being built into something that's completely awesome. You can find these in the U.S. They sold quite a few. Um, and I know project ones aren't that ex expensive, so... It's really a car where you, you could take something that start out with something not that expensive, spend a lot of time and money on it, and make something that's totally awesome, and maybe even get it uh, displayed here at SEMA. There's a, another pretty awesome build. This is a 1939 Dodge Hearse. Uh, I believe it's from either. It's, uh, where's this guy from? It's a right hand drive. I think he's from Australia or New Zealand. Um, this thing is pretty damn amazing. Uh, Check this out. It's got the uh, cad lights out the back. All right, 1955 Thunderbird Gasser. Check it out. It's got the uh, bass float metal flake. It's got a, a small block Ford in there with a with a blower on it. This thing is pretty wild with the cut down windshield. So it's got the uh, red lines with the uh, mags. Yet another wild custom here at SEMA. Here's one for all the old school monster truck fans. It's an old Ford uh, dent side pickup. It's a monster truck. This thing is pretty bitchin'. That's a Chevy truck. Check that out. Well, this year it's not like a small car. It's absolutely amazing the amount of work that goes into these things. Bad habit. Cool uh, custom uh, C10. This is actually a fire truck. So uh, it's a '71 Chevy C10 pickup. So you got a uh, firefighter logo on the uh, steering wheel. So you got the old firefighter uh, wheel chocks. I've actually got a set of those myself. So it's really cool. Well, it's a 57 Ford Fairlane Gasser with all the right original patina. Check this out. So we've got the uh, rusty uh, mag wheels. Looks like it was left out in the field for many years. And we've got the corn stuck under the uh, bumper there. Like old school Broncos? We got old school Broncos. Check it out. It's the old uh, Parnelli Jones uh, Broncos from back in the day. It's like Broncos as far as the eye can see here. From the Baja 1000, 1969. Complete with desert dust. Right, there's a sweet, sweet, sweet van. You know I'm going to video it. Here's a first gen Econoline. Check this guy out. Right hand drive. It's completely dropped. It's got the uh, side pipes. Show the interiors. Of course, it's got the uh, required shed carpeting. It's got the uh, mirrored ceiling. Well, those seats are, but it's got a uh, crate motor in it. Just a really awesome first gen Econoline. Uh, this is a uh, 1968 Shelby uh, EXP 500. It was a prototype uh, with fuel injection. And it's also a, a notchback. It's a regular coupe, not a fastback, which is kind of neat. So it almost looks like a California special with Shelby badges, but this was actually, uh, Shelby actually built this back then. So it's, so I think it's, it's one of two they made. So very rare, almost priceless. I had no clue anything like this ever existed. 
Um, but it's kind of neat because, you know, if anyone that would just see this on the street would just assume it was like a California special uh, with Shelby badges on it. But, nope, it's a, a real Shelby build. All right, so it's a uh, Volkswagen Polo Harlequin. So anybody that remembers the old uh, Volkswagen Golf Harlequin from back in the 90s, here's sort of like a uh, Polo Harlequin. Play with the uh, bike crack. So this is actually an official uh, VW show car. I'm just gonna walk around a little bit because I think it's bitching. All right, so this is one I've actually been seeing a lot on the uh, internet on the days leading up to the uh, event here at SEMA. This is actually a Chevy uh, Score Battery C10 uh, with a camper. If you look, they extended out the uh, the bed there to accommodate even more camper. So it's called the uh, Brown Sugar. Very cool to see a lot of like, there's a lot of square bodies here. If you're a huge square body fan, there's like plenty to see here at SEMA. This one, of course, has a crowd all around it. Kind of get an idea of what's going on back there. All right, here's a custom 57 uh, Coupe de Ville with the uh, roof sliced off. Done up to look like a 50s like uh, Motorama car. This one's actually really cool. It's got 59 cab lights on a 57. I don't I don't know if I would have gone that route because obviously a 57 show car wouldn't have had 59 lights, but whatever. But I guess it's 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 sort of like in that realm of Motorama cars, if you will. Amazing build though. Gotta love the caddies. Makes me want to get my 56 out of the garage. Another build that caught my eyes: a 57 Olds uh, Ford hardtop wagon. Um, these are these are very very rare. Look, there's no post in the middle. I used to have a 58 Caballero, which was the Buick version of this uh, for a hardtop wagon. Um, unfortunately, I sold it. Uh, the guy who I sold it to still has it and hasn't done anything with it, but um, I'm sure he will eventually because he's a big Buick guy. Um, this one is absolutely stunning. And as you can imagine, these aren't the easiest cars to restore um, or, or even to modify. It's kind of neat. These uh, these are the Corvettes from the old VH1 uh, giveaway from back back in the day. I think back in the 80s. Uh, it was late 80s. They gave away one year of every Corvette up until that time. And actually, I was at the uh, where they gave them away in Culver City at uh, MGM Studios uh, when when they had the event because it was open to the public. And I grew up in Culver City, so I've actually seen these cars before, but probably about 30 years ago. Um, and they're literally, uh, re they restored them again because they sat in a, a garage for many years and now they're going to be uh, given away again. There's one for all the truck fans. This is a uh, 91 Dodge uh, first generation Cummins uh, 12 valve, fully custom, uh, dually. So this is actually a one ton. I'm gonna start walking around some of the indoor halls here. Uh, basically, everything I just shot, you can actually see if you go to SEMA and uh, you uh, don't have a badge. So now I'm inside where you do need a badge, which I have. Um, so even if you're out in Vegas when SEMA's going on, lots of tool porn here. Check out tool porn, tool porn. But uh, you can definitely uh, still see something. And also on Friday night, they do the big uh, SEMA Ignited, which you can buy tickets for even if you don't have a badge and you can see all of the cool uh, show cars uh, in sort of like a, uh, a car show format uh, in, a, in a separate parking lot. Yeah, basically the uh, overlanding experience area where they have all the cool like camping gear. Uh, as you can see they got a vintage uh, Land Cruiser here on with a uh, camper up on top. It's a uh, vintage uh, International Scout. This one's actually got the uh, the four-cylinder Cummins conversion that's uh, become kind of popular. So it's a really clean, old-school Scout. I got a car cover for a Fiat that uh, looks like a vintage Fiat. So even when your car's covered, they'll still know it's a Fiat. Whether it's good or bad, that depends on you.
Yeah, I said 95 Mustangs, I mean, they take a lot of heat because they're not Fox bodies and, you know, all that good stuff. But, you know, they're pretty cheap and they're, they're good to pick up for project cars. And this one's actually done really cool into like a road race car. Probably one of the uh, cooler uh, SN95 Mustangs out there. Um, just pretty darn awesome. Alright, this is kind of neat. This is like a VW Fox pickup. It's not like a one of those Volkswagen Rabbit uh, Caddy pickups that you normally see uh, with the diesel. This is, if you look at the back end especially, you can tell this looks like it was a uh, Volkswagen Fox. So, kind of a cool build. Okay, this uh, old 68 Dodge D200 uh, swept line pickup with a uh, 5.9 Cummins in it, um, 24 valve. It's an awesome custom truck here. Uh, this is actually in the Mopar booth, which is, which is really cool. They always have some really, really sweet stuff over here. It's called the uh, Lowliner. It's actually, uh, these are called a uh, swept line pickup. All right, it's a uh, 58 Plymouth Fury, uh, otherwise known as Christine. Uh, it's got a, a modern crate motor in it. This thing is uh, pretty crazy. All of, a, all of course, there's a crowd now, so it's very hard to video any of the cars at this point. I'm going to give it my best. Just a uh, beautifully restored car with a modern drivetrain. Ah, uh, the door panel's missing. Oops. Um, very cool, though. Kind of makes me want to, and then, of course, there's a floor shifter where the uh, push buttons are no longer operational. <laughs> Makes me want to do something with my 59 Plymouth. But uh, kind of a nice build uh, of an iconic uh, car. There's a vintage Jeep build uh, done actually by Mopar in the Mopar booth. The, uh, five quarter. Check out the interior. Very bare bones for off-road. I don't think they would take this off-roading actually though. But pretty amazing build, full custom, like aluminum uh, bed. It's a very sweet truck. So here we got some electric vehicles. There's a uh, 911 Porsche that's been converted to electric. So I'm sure it's very torquey off the line. Look, there's no shift knob or anything and uh, it's got an electric motor back there where the uh, where the engine would normally sit and a uh, newer Hyundai electric vehicle and they've got this uh, electric uh, kit vehicle that they sell to high schools uh, to teach them about electric vehicles uh, kind of anything that's almost like a dune buggy There's a sweet little Corolla right here. Uh, the show's like really starting to fill up, so there's a lot of people here. Um, as you'd expect on the first day of the season. Oh, this looks pretty badass. All right, if you like Camaros, but you miss Pontiac, here's a uh, Trans Am kit to convert uh, your Camaro into a Trans Am, complete with the uh, shaker head. This thing's uh, pretty wild. First I'd rather just go get an old Trans Am. <laughs> it's even got like uh, 77, 78 looking tail lights on there. And that's not enough to have a uh, 69 Trans Am kit as well. All right, here's a really sweet little Miata. Enough for Raceling. Hopefully with a uh, spoiler. shot from the back. There's a, another one of those uh, icon builds where they take like a cool old like patina worn car and put like a modern drivetrain and chassis under it. This one's got a uh, LS9 in it. So you can see it's like really original faded paint. Uh, wheels are extended out. They're, they're wide wheels uh, and they're made to accommodate the, uh, the original hubcaps. Let's get the uh, worn out interior. It's a pretty sweet ride. <laughs> a 
very cool Hudson. And it's uh, one of the Icon derelict cars. Yeah, this one's drawn a massive crowd. This is a, a 74 uh, E-Type Jaguar uh, redone by uh, Foos. Uh, it looks more, kind of the way you redid it, it looks more like a Ferrari in the front. But uh, this one's got a massive crowd. Everyone's like photographing this one, so I'm gonna try to get it as best I can. Just, just an amazing custom build on this one. Um, real simple dash, look at that, dude. Just, just the gauges, just the bare bones. Almost looks more like a uh, Series 1 uh, E-Type, uh, you know, versus a later E-Type, which is what, what they started with. So it's like a much cleaner design with that they uh, finished it off. All right, uh, 60s Buick Rivieras are always really cool, as everyone walks right in front of my shot. Um, they always make it for an awesome custom. This one's like absolutely amazing. Still got a uh, nail head in there. It's got the interior. It's just a spectacular uh, show car. Seriously, when's the last time you saw a VW notchback? You just don't. These are, these are like disappeared off the face of the earth. You just don't see these anymore. This one is like super clean. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's just a quick shot of the uh, main show floor. All right, the Edelbrock booth actually has this really cool old uh, vintage Toyota Celica. Uh, slightly more modern uh, drivetrain in there. Very cool. It's kind of like a, a flat, like beige, uh, with some very 70s looking stripes. This thing is pretty damn cool. Really like the details on this car. So you know my Cadillac guy. Well, check out this uh, LS swapped uh, '59. Kind of interesting. That side looks looks pretty pretty well stock. Uh, larger wheels with the uh, white wall tires. Give that give that appearance of it being stock, but it's not. And of course, those iconic '59 uh, tail fins. The poke your eye out. Check out this uh, 57 Chevy 150 uh, period correct gasser, complete with uh, Bass Boat Metal Flake. It's called the Cherry Bomb. Wow. Okay, this is bitching. I know it's another Cadillac. This is a uh, 48 uh, Fastback uh, Cadillac with uh, CTSV drivetrain and interior. So I guess they just basically set it right on top of a uh, CTSV. Let's check out the interior. It's the uh, CTSV interior. Um, kind, kind of unique, really. Is that iconic? That was the first year for the fins for Cadillac. Very iconic. Right, how about a, an early swept line Dodge pickup with a uh, modern 6.4 liter Hemi under the hood. And for a bonus, it's got patina and it's slammed to the ground. Check this thing out. Looks like he's got a full custom suspension on it as well. There's a really amazing build. This one's an early Plymouth Barracuda with a modern Hemi in it. This one has like full custom interior, as you can see. Swing it across the back. This car is pretty darn amazing. 
for the German car fans, here's a nice little BMW coupe. Full race, ready. Plexi windows and all. All right, uh, this Challenger has a massive crowd around it, so it might be a little hard to photograph and video, but uh, check this out. Just unbelievable cars. This is really what SEMA is right here, just unbelievable customs. And this is definitely one of them. Very cool Challenger. 2002, yes please. This one is very, very sharp. Very cool livery on this one. It's the early style with the round tail lights. Right, here's the uh, Conline pickup oh, truck. Sorry, oh, it's cool. Um, Conline pickup truck, complete with skeleton behind the wheel. I think it's got enough engine to get itself down the road. Check that out. It's called the Grasshopper. I'm sure it, it bounces around pretty good. It's even got the wheelie bar and the chute. What what a wild wild truck. As the day goes on, it's getting a little hard to shoot these cars, but uh, I'm going to try my best. There's a lot of people here at the Las Vegas Convention Center. This is neat. It's a 64 Chevy Impala uh, with a sliding back sunroof, like, like old school Volkswagen style. Um, look at that. It's got a uh, custom seats, custom console, and everything. But uh, probably the most interesting thing is that uh, that roof there. Wow, it's a Honda 600. This one's got a uh, VFR 800 motorcycle motor in it. Check that out. This is really cool. I actually had one of these ones. Somebody gave me one about 20 years ago. Uh, found out the parts were difficult to track down at that time. So I gave it to another friend of mine, and he wound up selling it to another friend. I don't know if anything ever happened to that car. Um, I guess one way around the problem with the mechanical parts availability is just to put a more modern motorcycle engine in it, as this guy did. That's a really, really awesome car. And Honda even put it, this is actually Honda's uh, official booth here at SEMA, so apparently Honda totally digs this thing as well. That makes me fun. Let's have a look at the interior. So this is a early 60s Chevy pickup truck. Uh, basically, Honda went and restored one to look like their old shop truck when they uh, first were sold in the United States. And this one's got some really cool stuff in the back. Check it out. It's an original Honda 50 Super Cub. Gotta love it. And a uh, looks like it's a CB, uh, CB160 Honda over there. Early Honda motorcycle. I should have kept, I used to have a 69 Cub, I should have kept, but it was nowhere near in that good of condition. But there's your vintage Honda motorcycle porn for today, as well as truck porn. Continuing my theme of videoing cars that are hard to get around because there's crowds, this is a Honda S800 Coupe. Uh, vintage, vintage Coupe that's uh, been modified. We've got a uh, period correct luggage in the back. This one's the outlaw. This is another Kevston Cadillac. This one's an early, wait, late 60s, early 70s El Dorado. With the uh, metal flag, it's a low rider. with a glass top. We also got a Low Rider 59 Impala here. Okay, with the hydraulics. This one's back in an LS. All right, here's, here's Ed China's famous uh, couch car. Um, actually, he was at uh, Bob's Big Boy on Friday night for the cruise night. 
right when I was coming out of dinner with my daughter and he took off and my daughter really wanted to see this so I better video it just so she can see it and just so you can see it too but this is like pretty amazing this pizza here is actually the steering wheel and this uh, can of Guinness is actually the shifter and uh, I believe the Reese's Pieces uh, does something else maybe it's the brake just, just an incredible build this thing's actually road legal in the UK and I think there was something online the other day about him getting pulled over in Beverly Hills where they have kind of like not the nicest police around because we, we had problems with them years ago uh, with the scooter club I was in where we got pulled over in Beverly Hills and basically the cop told us like, oh, we're, we were told to pull over anyone with two wheels because we don't want them coming through our town. Um, so you can imagine he had a problem as well. Um, sitting next to us is this really cool old, uh, old school English Ford Escort. Uh, not something you see over on these shores very often. And I believe it says this was actually in one of the Fast and the Furious movies. Fast and Furious 6, so it's the actual car used in Fast and the Furious. So, I better get another shot of the uh, couch car just for my daughter because I told her most likely he was going to SEMA and I was right. All right, so this is the only AMC I've found here so far at SEMA. This one's actually a... Uh, extremely modified gremlin uh, does not have the original six cylinder motors you can see uh, it's got the big fat tires in the back. it looks like they narrowed the body and of course extended out the front end which gives it like a really cool like dragster look but um, that's one uh, that's one for all you AMC fans out there no pacers here Oh, and that dash looks like it's off of like a late 50s uh, Ford. This thing is just wild. All right, here's a really cool Dodge Rampage build with the uh, 392 Hemi in the bed. Sorry. Of these are normally front wheel drive. Check that out. Oh, I'm gonna try to get around and get a picture of the front. This thing is just wild. This is a uh, very, very chopped up uh, 1959 Chevy El Camino. Um, even has uh, patina somehow after they cut the whole thing up. So they must have uh, added that later because otherwise there would be weld seams everywhere. But it says radical. It's definitely radical. And the wheel's sticking out. This is a good example of some of the funky stuff you see here at SEMA. All right, almost ready to finish off the day. I found this uh, cool wheel stander uh, Dodge Ram short bed. Check it out. It's got the uh, blown Hemi in the back. Not a lot of weight in the front. And, of course, a nice wheelie bar in the back. And a parachute. So that looks like a whole lot of fun. All right, so that's about going to wrap it up uh, for day one here at SEMA in Las Vegas for 2019. Um, you know what? Tomorrow morning I got the meeting with the SEMA SAN people uh, about uh, a Assembly Bill 210. So we'll see how that goes. I'll be leaving town shortly thereafter to, go to get back to my house. Uh, so this is probably the only video I'm going to shoot of the actual show. I'm going to try to shoot some video hopefully tomorrow. Uh, of the meeting or maybe like a recap or something. I don't know what to quite know what they're going to allow yet. I have to uh, see how it goes in the morning. And uh, we'll update you on that. Um, I tried to get a good variety of cars. Um, if you don't like what you see, I'm sure you can watch another person's video and they'll, they'll have something else because there's no way, especially in a day that you can actually see the whole show, video all the cool stuff here because it's just it's just like there's cool stuff like everywhere everywhere you look uh anyhow thanks for watching uh be sure to subscribe comment all that good stuff and like and uh, i'll see you